Y'all, welcome back to Kentucky Fred Wargaming, where two guys who aren't qualified to talk about anything decide to talk about a game with hard math and chance. I'm Joe. And I'm John. And we are continuing our brief 40,000 foot view. Hey, there's a joke. <laughs> <Ayo>. <laughs> of the Warhammer 40k world, faction by faction. Uh, and we're just trying to take these piece by piece because there's so much lore in this game. Uh, and after seeing how many people in the YouTube comment section are new to 40k, maybe this is their first edition, uh, we thought it would be good to go faction by faction and just lay out briefly what you need to know if you are maybe considering them as one of your options for building an army. Uh, we've already put out Chaos, we've put out the Imperium, we've put out Tyranids, and now it's time for the objectively best faction. The Orcs! The orcs. Uh, I love the Orcs. I have been waiting to talk about them for way too long. Uh, when we did the index for the faction focus, John and I did the Orc video and laughed for, what, like a solid minute straight of just terrible dead air time? Some might say we never stopped laughing from that moment because we have continued bringing it up regularly. I used it on the table and I called that model Orc DoorDash. That's amazing. It's so good. Uh, the orcs in this setting are delightful. Uh, they're a Xenos faction, meaning they aren't Chaos, but they also aren't Imperium. Um, which means that they stand alone and have a lot of lore to cram into a single video. Because there's not a lot of overarching stuff that they tie to. Uh, whereas, you know, if you understand the Imperium, then Chaos is a little easier to talk about. Um, they're their own unique duck, much like the Tyranids. So... Let's start at the beginning. Where did orcs come from? Because uh, your worst nightmares. Uh, these are my best dreams, John. You telling me I just get to run around with the boys and shoot ammo without having to worry about the cost? John, I'm getting ready for deer season right now. Don't even ask me how much thirty thirty costs. Don't. I but love if that. You're on the other side. Horrifying. <laughs> I would love to just be able to pull trigger, not think, and boom, boom. That sounds amazing. Uh, John, where do these orcs come from? So. Tell me a story. The orcs come from many, there's many different theories, but the prevailing one that seems to be the most likely, uh, based off of the unreliable narrator of 40k, is that the orcs are uh, a devolved race of the Krork which were built by the Old Ones, which are the same ones who built the Eldar, that went to war with the Necrons and the War in Heaven, to be a warlike race built to fight their wars in space and to commit manual labor. Um, so as horrifying as you believe these orcs to be, uh, think about what if they also had brain cells. Yeah. Uh, this is the worst <laughs> they've ever been. This is the easiest fight they've ever been to beat. <laughs> They are currently, yes. like, eight-foot-tall hulking monstrosities whose war bosses bench-press cars. And this is the devolved baby form. Yes. Uh, um, because they are self-replicating warriors. Uh, they do not reproduce, uh, like, sexually. They reproduce, reproduce asexually. Um, they are effectively mushroom people. Yeah. They pop out of the ground as a fully grown replicated version of like whatever their other one is. And they immediately start engaging in orc culture, um, which is built all around combat. It is its main center focus. Everything they do is based around violence. They actually can't feel emotions outside of like violence stimuli. And feeling um, good about being in a group. Like, but that yeah, is to like, like spur the war yes um yeah i think that's a point i want to hit on for a second because you have to understand this point to really understand the fear of what like why everyone is horrified when orcs show up on a planet like usually when you have to fight a warrior you could assume that when you kill that warrior they might have children but those children are going to take time to grow okay or maybe that mm -hmm. warrior never had children and now, when you shoot them on your planet, you can expect that their that enemy force is down a body, and they're probably not going to fill that in very easily. Uh, you can worry about the logistics of trying to like have family trains coming through in a war zone to continue to have children and everything. 
and how to feed those children and raise those children and clothe and shelter them. Because usually babies are fragile and it makes it hard to take them on a warpath. Orcs have none of it. <laughs> none of they it. They don't have babies. They were designed to be nightmares by space lizards? Frogs? I think frogs. frogs. Space frogs. We're going to go with space frogs? Yeah, yeah. I think space frogs wake uh, up. To be like in a thing you don't need to support. So an orc will run around. They drop skin cells when they sweat or they run. Uh, and those skin cells, all thousands of them, is a little tiny seed, of, so to speak. It's a spore that hits the ground and can nestle. And depending on what's needed, will over not very long grow into a fully formed, like eight foot, like seven to eight foot tall orc who will then burst out of the ground once they are too big for their little pod and then immediately want to commit violence on other things. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, and will arm themselves instinctually to do so. Yes. And, like, this isn't out of necessarily a place of malice. Um, there are stories in which, like, much like every faction, there are different writers and different writers write them in different ways. And so, like, when you read the book Brutal and Cunning, they're much more comedic. They're much more fun. Um, what most people know as the orcs. Like, yeah, the silly humanies. But then if you read another book, like, 15 hours, the orcs are this horrifying nightmare menace. Um, like they're just two different perspectives of like what is effectively a kind of objectively absurd concept. Um, and I think that's an important thing to, to note about the orcs is that they are inherently absurd. Yes. <laughs> they don't make any damn sense. Uh, one of the things that you're probably already know about if you're do anything with 40 K is that the orcs think something enough in a collective and it becomes a thing. Like, the red cars go faster because red goes fast. That's science, John. It's, 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 it's science. science. I don't know what you want. Uh, like, they believe that purple orcs are the stealthiest, so, like, there has never been a purple orc. Well, John, have you ever because seen a purple orc? Them. How yeah. stealthy do you gotta be to never be seen? That's science. Yeah, you can see it. And so, like, it is impeccably stupid like it's oh. like the dunning kruger effect but like made manifest in an alien species i love it so much it's phenomenal it is brings so much comedic relief to the setting that is like overly serious while also still adding more serious elements if you really want it um which i think is needed in such a heavy setting yeah because and i think that's worth saying is like it's really really funny ha ha he he until it's not and then yes. all at once, it's done. <laughs> yes. Uh, which I think is nice from the other, like the flip side, right? The flip side you're seeing in the 40k setting is very often, oh, serious all the time, besides my one draw humor joke. Ha 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 ha. This one just like all dick jokes all the way down until like, they're like, oh, but also here's a horrific tragedy of my backstory. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Um, also, TLDR, that horrific tragedy. Hey, I had a great time doing it. Let's go. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're horrifying. Um, yeah, they're just absolutely nutty. Uh, we really can't cover everything about them in this video. Uh, we will make more work videos in the future. Like, it's something we've actually talked about. We will yeah. make more work videos. Uh, and uh, because of this, like, way they reproduce, they like the you end up with a lot of works quickly, and then orc intelligence sort of scales by how many orcs are present. So as they continually, like, have more orcs pop out of the ground, more orcs drop spores. So more orcs are made, more orcs pop out of ground, more orc are made, and then other stuff starts to pop out of the ground, like goblins and squigs, which are like bouncy beach balls with teeth that eat everything around them. And, like, goblins are like the little slaves who, like, you beat up to make them do stuff you don't want to do. Mainly everything not punching someone in the mouth. Um... And then as more of these people get together, they start to have more ideas, they start to get more weapons, they start to unlock more concepts that they've never seen, they just know. And it's all instinctive memory uh, that's locked away. That as you get more and more orcs, they start to get smarter and smarter and know things that they've never seen. Uh, and then all of that gets worse and worse for a little local area until some orc ends up beating the absolute piss out of every other orc around him. So badly 
so brutally and so thoroughly that no one else wants to step up anymore. King of the And when that happens, that orc gets huge, grows bigger than every other orc. And it's It's like the Hank Hill of the orcs. Yes, exactly. And uh and when that happens, all the other orcs just look at the boss and go, uh, I would follow that guy. Like <laughs> Cause that guy got huge. And you want to get huge. Because warfare is the only way orcs grow. It's the only way they improve themselves. It's their only purpose. And if that guy got huge, then that means that guy knows where fights are. And if that guy knows where fights are, if you follow him, you're going to get in fights. And then you're going to get big and you're going to beat the piss out of him. And then you're going to take everybody to fight. I am now enamored by the concept that a war boss is really just like a TikTok fitness he influencer. He is. He really is. It's phenomenal. He's convinced like, you that he has, like, he drank all the crow milk. And now, if you just drink the crow milk too, you could get big like him. Ignore all of the steroids <laughs> he's taking. Don't look at that. Don't look. That's just, that's the pain boy. Don't look at the pain boy. Look over here. Look at me. Um, and when that happens, and the big orc boss beats the hell out of everybody. They go to war in the name of Gork and Mork. They're two twin gods. One that is cunning but brutal. One that is brutal but cunning. They're high-end concepts. You probably don't understand it. This is like 500 level courses. It's okay. They're, they, they picture of them as like two orc gods that are similar but not the same. And don't suggest they're the same. Or you get beat up. Uh, and when that happens, they go to war with a just a staggering amount of units. It's a, on the tabletop and in the lore. Uh, the orc army is maybe almost as big as like Eldar and Space Marines in terms of number of unit options they have. It's pretty fucking up there. Between, and they keep adding more. Like, yeah, like between, they, don't, they don't rework kits. They just add new ones. <laughs> like the heroes and the foot troops and all the like specialists. There, there's a lot going on. So like when an orc force goes to war... John, like, there's one thing you think of more than anything, right? Like, th there's one piece on the ground that has to matter. Right? Like, it's it's in the name of, like, orc boys. And it is just boys. Mobs. Yes. Of mobs. Of unending, unruly boys. The green type. It is just boys. Like, there's a bunch of other stuff that you can bring, but, like, there's an old saying in orc players. Some of y'all might know this if you're orc players. Boys before toys. Yep. There's always boys. You always bring boys. There's always boys on the table. This is the most important part of any fledgling war boss's army is their boys. Mm -hmm. You got to bring a ton of boys. Also, how 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 can you have a good time without your boys? You can't. You need your boys. You can't go raiding all of the mortal realms or the 40Ks or the things or the whatever settings without your boys. We can't play these games without our boys. These orcs can't be fighting without the boys. You can't be cracking open an old one without the boys. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Now, it could be some beast snagger boys. It could be some, like, regular boys. You could be the Red Gobbo and trying to have a, you know, a revolution with lots of little Gretchen boys. You know? Lots, there's lots of options, but they gotta have the boy. It's true. It's true. And every now, out of, like, those teeming hordes of boys, every now and then you get something called weird boys. Um, which can come in a number of flavors. What that means to the orcs is that there are a number of boys who get really, really, really into one special interest. Turbo hard. And they make their whole personality about it. Um, Neurodivergent orcs. Yes. Like, it's yeah. fine. Uh, some are just, like, really into planes. I don't know what to tell you. They love planes. Like, some of them get really into magic and spirituality. And then they vomit green goop at people. Uh, others get a medical degree from a vending machine in some terrible far-flung planet that is not regulated. And now they're a doctor. Um, there's all sorts of these. They're in there amongst the lads. Uh, and normally, though, this, like, team of boys runs forward, and then flanking them or backing them up to try to hit some slightly bigger targets. The actual vehicles. Which I think, John, is, like, your favorite, isn't it? Like, the, the crazy, crazy vehicles themselves. Uh, the Speed Freaks? Yeah. yeah, I love the Speed Freaks. Uh, it reminds me of Mad Max in the greatest of ways. You're a Floridian. Uh, I knew have... you loved Speed Freaks. Like, yeah, like, so, like, it's all dirt bikes and, like, 
speed around and pew 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 pew. Uh, it's super fun. Honestly, I was prob I was like this close to starting a speed freaks army, and then Gene Sealer Cult came out with dirt bikes, and I made my decision. Um, speed freaks though have like so an orc vehicle, right? They don't understand how combustion engines work. They don't understand how like aerodynamics work. They know nothing about mechanical parts or how like machine shops work or any of this. All they know is that wheels can turn if you believe and that technically the louder a vehicle is, the faster it goes. And if you believe a gun can pew pew, it can pew pew. And if you make it red, it goes even faster. And so what you end up with is a bunch of like really shitty like frames that technically don't work that don't have engines in them or they've got what they think are engines or just junk thrown into a like a compartment that makes a shit ton of noise when it moves and they believe it goes fast and they do that's the thing it goes fast as fuck like it shoots an un un unnumerable amount of bullets that they don't ever run out of somehow until they stop believing but they continually can drive these trucks into hell itself it's fucking insane um, inquisitors have torn apart orc vehicles, orc like weapons, torn apart orc tech in general. Surely there's a gone. secret, right? Like there's got to be a secret. <laughs> yeah, and they're like this doesn't work. Like this is just like you you they used a toaster to shoot a nuke at me. What the fuck? Um, there's no piston in this engine. Like what? <laughs> yeah, like what's? <laughs> it's an eight inch cube of aluminum. Like what? <laughs> you put sixteen Gretchen where the alternator supposed to be. Like what happened here? Um, <laughs> And like that's that's the orc tech is like they believe it works, therefore it does, um, and it leads to a lot of like crazy looking machines. Like I'm talking Morkonauts, Gorkonauts, uh, just in general everything. It looks phenomenal. Boost the blasters, uh, the snaz wagons, the rocket truck squig orc, buggies, orc door dash. That's the rocket truck squig buggy. The speed top dragster, which is like, what if you took a Formula One car and a jet and you put them together? The like, jump. They have kamikaze airplanes that shoot stuff, and like the orcs just keep, um, and they get so excited while they're that they forget they're flying an airplane and fly it into vehicles, and they love it. They have fun the entire time. Um, there's like other big mechs who like learn how to do commando style stuff so they can try to infiltrate and steal Imperial Knights and drive them around uh, and have a blast doing it as they die inside these Imperial Knights trying to pilot them. There's all sorts of wild stuff like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. And like similar, like I like the Beast Vagas. It's a smaller model range because they're newer, but like then you get boys that ride giant squig creatures that are like sort of like barbarian orcs that just beat these creatures into submission. And then ride them into battle as glorious steeds to like chomp apart and destroy any large vehicle. Uh, and then lastly, you get into like the the sort of real big terrifying threats, which are like the big walkers. They're equivalent to Imperial Knights, but again, made of scrap parts and way too much armor. Uh, and belief. And belief. <laughs> Gorkonauts, Morkonauts, Stompas, and stuff like the Kill Rig. Um, which. Just all of which are delightful and horrifying. Uh, and all of that goes together in this, like, unorganized, unruly mob into the enemy and just beats them apart as they get shot. And that's fine for an orc, because you had a fight. Yeah, the win or lose, they're there for it. You followed the big guy into battle, now you're going to get bigger. And if you die, well, you go to Gork and Mark and you come back again to get bigger. That's life. Um, and then the thing we really like to end with on this, though, is if if we have kind of pitched you this from the high-end view, it's helpful to know where they're at now in the setting, so you can make an educated under like an educated purchase if you want them and know sort of like what they've been up to, uh, where they're at, like are they in a good place, and then maybe even some thoughts we might have from time to time about where they could be going. Um, and, like, we talked about it on the Tyranid video, but right now, bugs are everywhere in the world. And if you're an orc who wants a fight, that's awesome. And it's bad for everyone who is not either of them. Uh, because, like, 
Tyranids, right? They consume biomass. They absolutely devour biomass. But orcs, on the other hand, they don't need it. They don't need it whatsoever. But they do generate it. Because every time there just exists, they spawn more orc. Which is exactly what Tyranids want. And they're going to keep fighting. Which means they're going to run towards the Tyranids, not away from them. And so they're going to literally feed their own meat into the grinder that is the Tyranids until the Tyranids get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And they all... It all goes downhill because more orcs show up and then the orcs get bigger that survive and then it becomes this big stalemate or so an Inquisitor thought once yeah. when he made the Octarius Sector, which is he had a beacon placed to lure Tyranids to a sector and then a beacon placed for orcs that lured orcs into a sector and let them duke it out and will deal with whatever comes out if they ever come out. Something came out. The answer was both of them came out. That was the real problem. Yep. Yep. Who wins when you both grow from combat? Nobody. Because they just kept getting larger until you, they were unstoppable in both instances. Yeah, <laughs> like technically the Tyranids took the win. They took the sector and then spilled out everywhere. But the orcs that survived are colossal. They're so big and they're so veteran because they have fought these bugs for what feels like ages to them. They are going to be an unstoppable nightmare when they inevitably look at another group of orcs that are millions strong and say, I'm the biggest, you're following me. And then mm -hmm. they make them that big over time. That's horrifying. Yes. So now the orcs are in the setting, uh, fighting Tyranids, because Tyranids are everywhere, and growing in number um, after technically a loss, but like, who cares about that when you're an orc? <clears throat> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You got to fight, you're winning. Uh, and I think orcs also have a little bit of future lore coming up in Armageddon, which I will let John talk about because John knows a lot more about Armageddon than me because John is a World Eaters fan. Yes. And an Imperial so, Guard fan. Yes. Which is like, this is all of those combined together. And two of my friends play orcs, so... It's true. We're going to recreate Armageddon. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be phenomenal. I'm going to need to buy more orcs. It'll be fun. Uh, the cool thing about Armageddon is that it's a used to be a planet called Ulanor, which is the original homeworld of the orcs. You know, the seed of the orc empire in the ages past. Uh, but what it is now currently in the setting, after there's been three wars fought at it, one by the world eaters against the Imperium, against the Space Wolves and the Inquisition and the Grey Knights and the Guard and yada yada yada, and then two of the guard, mostly some space marine help against the orcs. Uh, Gazgul Thraka really wants this planet. That's the biggest orc in existence currently. BT does the biggest orc in existence. <laughs> he is also the biggest orc you can buy model range wise. It's true. He is a a big lad with his tiny little like goblin front. Akari, and he's a fucking nightmare. But he leads the biggest orc horde and wants Armageddon. And will be returning for Armageddon soon. But there's a problem there. Because it's not Garden anymore on the planet. It has now become half of a corn world after corn rituals performed on the planet allowed it to become a bastion of worship for the god of blood, death, and massacre against an army that just likes to fight. Yeah. So, World Eaters versus Orcs on this planet. It seems like a repeat of the thing with Octarius. Um, but I argue it's going to be way fucking cooler. Uh, the plan's going to break before they're done. It's much like Cadia. Because they're not going to stop. Neither one of them has the good sense to know when to stop. <laughs> it's just yes. never going to happen. Um, and I think that's going to be cool. And I think the fact that that used to be their home world and they've been fighting over it for like millennia talks about why... Like, it touches on why I think orcs are cool in a large part. And it's that they are sort of ever-present threat in the setting. That is uh, one of those things that unless you glass the planet, you can never truly get rid of. You might beat them. You might eradicate them down to, like, a couple of orcs left on a planet. Uh, you are never getting rid of orcs again. Well, it's also fascinating because, like, they, they have character to them. Like, mm -hmm. they, they have personality for sure, but... They're a force of nature more than they are individuals. 
Like, yeah, you've got Gazgul Thraka, who's like an individualized character who's super cool, but like, beyond that, really what you have is a force of nature. It is a concept, much like the Tyranids, right? They are a concept. They are not like this character. Not like, you know, like world leaders have Angron and Karn. Custodes have Trajan Valoris and Constantine Valdor. Mm -hmm. Like these humanizing, fa humanized factions, whether they're evil or good, have like characters you care about individually. This is another one of those factions that is just a force of nature. It is a concept made manifest. And this one is just constant never-ending violence like a hurricane of violence coming to your planet that once it grabs it never lets go yeah uh to quote nickelback no class no taste no shirt and shit faced like that's the orc manifesto uh and they they are that perfectly and i think in other factions you look at the big heroes like trajan valoris or like angron and they're larger than life they're colossal you know that no little guardsman could ever be as cool as Angron. Like, they could never become like Angron. They could never become Trajan Valoris. They're on another level. But any orc boy in that millions of strong tide could be the next Gat Ghoul Thraka. Any of them. With enough fighting, with enough experience, any of those bastards could rise up to be a galactic threat. Uh... And I think that's part of what makes the orcs cool. Um, if you like to make your own war bosses because the story's on the tabletop, boy howdy. That makes orcs cool. Uh, if you like to kit bash, boy howdy on the tabletop, orcs are cool. And in the setting, uh, they are just never beat, so they are going to stay around for a long time to come. And I think that's another reason why I just think orcs are delightful. Uh, and, I mean, you could kind of take them as you like. Some people prefer their orcs dark. In the orc community. I get it. I ain't gonna tell you you're wrong. It's valid. Um, but for me, I also like them bringing a little bit of levity. Which is the thing I want to leave on. Like, let's be honest. 40k is bleak, right? Um, we have done the past three videos on horrifically bleak factions. Okay? Every one of them is horrifying to talk about. It's awful. Whether you have, like, turbo repressive fascism, the empire... Horrible death of all joy and potential for chaos. Bug for Tyranids and nothing left behind. The entropic destruction of an, an uncaring cold universe. But should yes. you so want, orcs are <laughs> boys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and if you are someone who's maybe new to the game and you're getting into the lore and you are not enjoying the flavor, they're like, oh god, everyone just sucks so badly. Like, I hate every one of these factions. Maybe Orc. Maybe Orc. Maybe Orc. Maybe Good Time Faction. Good for you. Just a thought. Maybe, maybe I'm a tank. I'm a tank. Maybe I'm a tank. 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 I'll, I'll have to break down that story another time. And uh, Adeptus Ridiculousness. Go find the orc stuff on, uh, on Adeptus uh, we'll Ridiculousness. We'll link it below in the They're description, phenomenal. actually. Adeptus Ridiculous yes. is a fun uh, little podcast that talks about lore, and there's a uh, a story in there about orcs fighting guardsmen and, like, running out of ammo and tanks get involved. It's just uh, delightful. Uh, they're, so, they're so good. Please go listen to them. They're phenomenal. You'll have a great time. And we've really enjoyed talking about orcs, and much like with every faction we have talked on, it's hard to condense them because there's so much. We didn't talk about clan cultures we didn't talk about all the varied heroes we didn't touch on all the vehicles like we we didn't do any of that we didn't even touch on like the actual theories of the crork in what makes them dangerous and how they could actually destroy the galaxy like the, we didn't touch on any of it so there's way more there and we're going to be working on that behind the scenes and hopefully it'll be up not too long from now for now like subscribe and maybe we'll see you on the next one. Oh. The outro. It's been all of our opinion. Bonafide Kentucky Fried. We'll see y'all oh, on the next one. Oh, ha ha. You fucked up this time. Ha ha. It was me. I messed up. Ha ha. Oh. Ha ha.